Hi everyone, I'm Michael Stysen and this is Mobile Growth Podcast where we discuss how to launch, grow and successfully monetize mobile apps and we invite industry experts to learn everything from product to user acquisition and monetization strategies. And today our guest is Jesse Olympianen, founder of the Geek Lab. So Jesse, hi, nice to meet you. And my first question is, what is Geek Lab? Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah. Hi, Michael. Thanks. Thanks for having having me and us, us over here. And by the way, before we jump into the question, nicely pronounced. I know my last name isn't the easiest, but that went very well. Oh, uh, thank you. I, I'm always butchering. This is the hardest part <laughs> of the podcast so far right. for me is to pronounce the, the names and the surnames correctly. Yeah. Oh, that, that went extremely well. But yeah, Geek Lab. In short, if you have to condense what we do in one sentence, so we turn impressions into installs. So essentially, we have a platform that allows you to create lookalike app store pages. So before you launch your app, before you develop your app, you can actually go ahead and already create like a App Store or Google Play page that has all the same functionalities. So therefore, you can try out different things and, and A-B test different things prior to launching an app. And then once you've launched your app, so then we're heavily part of App Store optimization because you can use our platform to A-B test different icons, screenshots, app preview videos, and practically how anything it, how, of, the, of that page. Yeah, sorry for interrupting, but how exactly does yeah. it work? How can you test anything before you even launch the app? Right. So what our platform does is that when you create a campaign through our platform. So it actually creates an HTML5 lookalike page that looks and feels just like the real App Store pages do. And kind of depending on the acquisition channel, but let's say you're using Meta as your acquisition channel. So when user clicks the, the ad itself, so instead of getting a App Store on their in-app browser, so they actually get our HTML5 page that looks and feels mm -hmm. just like the real App Store page do. So therefore then you can run these different tests uh, yeah, that's, even prior to launching an app. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. So you can actually test like potential interest to your app before building the app, right? And what kind of right. data can you get from, from this test? Yeah, precisely. And, and from data points, so with just like these, these testing pages themselves, we get like your most important marketing metrics. So essentially you get an estimated, estimated CPI already prior to launching the app. You know, exactly like the amount of installs you would get for, for like installs per meal, right click through rates, conversion rates on the app store page. And on top of that, we have a bunch of other behavioral like metrics, like how many people actually scrolled back and forth, how many people read the description, how many people scrolled through the screenshots and actually saw the last mm -hmm. screenshots, for example, and things like this. So who is, who, who is your like usual client, typical client? Is something who came up with an app idea, but he doesn't want to invest, let's say, into building the app and he wants to get some data before building the app? Right. So uh, even though we're agnostic to any, any industry that like has their apps distributed through app iOS app store or Google play. So mm -hmm. could be because of, of, of our founding team's background, but uh, we've been leaning heavily towards gaming industry, mobile gaming industry. So like mm -hmm. 90 plus percent of our developers and marketeers work with our mobile gaming companies. And to your point as well, so we have sort of 50, 50 split, 50% 50 of our, our developers and marketeers use our tool to do these pre-launch tests and the other 50% around use our tool to optimize their current app store material. So, you know, the game could be out already three years and then you want to make sure that like your, your creatives convert as good as possible. So then you A-B test different visuals and, and, and like consistent looks with a platform. Okay. So this is the second part of what you are doing. You are working with already existing apps with yeah. some, some user base and you help them optimize user experience with like native Apple A-B testing instruments, like actually actual product pages on the app store. That too. But like also because of we, we collect so much more data points, so mm -hmm. they're more us usable to, to do build like five, five, like a further hypothesis. So therefore, mm -hmm. even though like there is this native app store, um, mm -hmm. like A-B testing solutions. So developers still use actually are uh, A-B testing solutions. So the traffic yeah. still goes to your platform. You're getting yeah. the, your, your data points there. And based on that, you can provide some app store optimization using, using this data. And by the way, how yeah. did you guys came up with this idea for the platform? How did you decide to work on this? Right. So actually I, I used to work at Rovio prior, prior launching gig lab, and uh, we were building up a new Forex game at Rovio and uh, I wanted to find out what would be the best name 
for this new mm-hmm. game. I knew that plays a big role in, in, in mm-hmm. the market ability metrics. So I looked out there, the alternatives, and there were only like two competitors and we couldn't use one of them. And the other one costed like 60,000 bucks for that one test. And I was like, okay, it can't be this tough. So I called my friend who uh, I know has an entrepreneurial background and said, okay, we need to fix this. Uh, and then we got together, got two other founders on board. Rovio was kind enough to actually let me work on Gig Lab for like half a year or so before then fully jumping 100% on Gig Lab. But yeah, managed to, to build it at that yeah, point. And I know, I know yeah. that you are based in Finland. Is it like all, all your team is based in Finland? Yeah, except one of the founders lives in Manchester and one of our employees is actually working remotely from Lisbon. Oh, like you came up with the idea for the business from your own problem with like testing what would be the best name for that before for the game before building it right yeah so so what specific like data you can test the app name how it looks like the screenshots right the description i guess so like everything that you would normally add to to the app store the stuff that you can edit on the app store you can do all that on your platform right yeah exactly so actually every single element you can even go down to writing like fake fake reviews to the page and kind of make the page look exactly. See how like this it. reviews affect the TR conversion yeah, rates. Exactly. So to give you an example, we've, we've had tests where you th- there's just the name, right? So the only yeah. thing that changes is the app name. Then we've had tests where you th- try out the different themes. So let's say you're building up a puzzle game and uh, as sort of the meta for your new puzzle game, the theme yeah. you're thinking about between like, let's say hospital and crime and, you know, I don't know, hotel management would be like the different themes. So then what you can do is you can actually build the entire page to fit that theme. So all the screenshots, the name, the icon, even the app Mm -hmm. video description, all reflect to that particular theme. And then you can test those against each other. Or then as as sort of the third example I can throw in here is is just what you mentioned, a, a review test. So you can have the exact same page where the only difference is that the other page has like 4.5 re- star reviews, a couple of positive comments, whereas the other one has like, you know, three, three on average, and then a bit more negative comments. And you can see how much that actually affects your install rates. Do you, can, can I ask you a question about yeah. this, this solution? Do you feel th- threatened by Apple's native custom product pages now. So essentially Apple is rolling out some, some ways to test what works yeah. best on the app store. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's, that's very good because of course ours is a premium solution. So we have subscriptions and, and our solution costs money. That means that even though we would want to give it out for free for everyone, we were a proper business, so we can't. So there, there are a lot of developers that can't afford our platform right now. So yeah. what they can do instead, they can use the native testing tools. And then when they have the budget, they run a lot of like paid, paid acquisition. So then they usually come to our platform at that point. And how the pricing works, can, can some indie developer use your platform to figure out what would be the best name and other stuff for the, for the app or it's just for, for larger companies? Yeah. Well, it's for, for indies, what we've done is we have like this Apologies, I'm a bit of a space nerd, so all of our pricing packages are named uh, like based on different space related things. So our smallest package is called Pluto. Pluto, it comes at 300 bucks a month, which is like essentially made 100% for indie developers. So then you can jump on board, use like all the essential tools that you need for like to do like a name test or a theme test. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, a, that's about it. Yeah, interesting. Actually, no, I'll, I I wouldn't say that three hundred bucks is very indie developer friendly. It's it's kind right. of still a significant amount. We actually in in our platform you can start actually for free until you reach ten thousand yeah. in monthly revenue, and our like premium package, our business plan actually starts from three hundred. It, it kind of gets more right. expensive based on the revenue, but three hundred is kind of a little bit expensive at least for for indie right. developers sometimes. Yeah, we do have also like a, a free tier, but like there, like the results are very locked. So you can actually only see kind of what was the winner, but you can't see all the hundreds of other data points that we have, you know, within the campaigns, but you can see the winner. So that's, that's something you can do for free. But if you, if you want to then access the full data, so then it's like 300 bucks. For that, um, that set. Do, do you have like any insights on what kind of apps 
works best now? Like what to launch if, let's say you're an indie developer and you're thinking about building some app, how would you approach researching the market and market and do, do you have any like good ideas? Yeah. So of course, from, from gaming, we have a bit more actual data. Like we, we see always kind of six months to two mo two years in advance, what types of games people are, are starting to build. Like for example, a while back, there was this art hero game, right? Like where you played with one thumb. So when that came out, so we saw everyone jumping on that board immediately and trying to find out the best combinations of themes and everything to put together with that game core. But as for apps themselves, something we've definitely seen now is the people utilize like the, the trend of AI a lot. So, so basically mm -hmm. fun, not even necessarily utility apps, but apps where, you know, you, you are not, it, it, next to image recognition, selfie in your own, own taking a selfie of yourself and then having that yeah. output in different art stuff. So uh, now, now like this chat GPT is amazing. You can do other, a lot of the things with that. You can, you can go ahead and ask about like, uh, tell your info and then it gives you automatically a nutrition and a workout plan for you. That's personalized for you, right? Like we can do mm -hmm. a lot of different things. So now if, if you're a developer, you're interested, okay, what would be the best sort of what would have the best market potential out of these ideas? Would it be like a, a personal workout, like AI that gives you these workouts? Yeah. Or could it be like a thing that gives me my like weekly meal plan and then the recipes that I have to, you know, do and grocery list that I have to buy? What of which one of these two would have the best, best like market potential? So instead of like actually having to develop both of these apps first, so what you can do mm -hmm. is you can just create the visuals. You create an ad that shows you like what this, this application is doing. Then you create like the app store material again, like showcasing a bit further in detail, like what, what the actual app could have as a content. And then with our platform, you can actually also have a survey. So we have a survey tool. So then when the user click the download button and there is no app to download yet. So then you mm -hmm. can have a server where you ask more qualitative insights where you can ask, okay, what features would be most important to you and so on. So now before developing both of these apps. So you just create these assets, set up a campaign on Facebook. Typically we, we tend to do kind of first, like one very broad targeting, and then another one based a bit more towards like the persona that you're going after. And then after that, you can see exactly how much cheaper, for example, your workout plan app would be compared to the other one. And, and then actually make the decisions based on that and based on data rather than just like staying at home and thinking and hoping that you're making the right decision. Yeah, absolutely. So from marketing perspective, you're advising to run tests through Facebook ads, basically. The, the, yes, for the launching still, because of the reason that on Facebook, static ads work nicely and static ads are a bit more, they don't consume that much resources than video mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does. And on Facebook, you can still also like do very good targeting. So you can actually have your user persona and, and go after that. But other than Facebook, we if, if you have resources to create videos, so we've seen great, great success at TikTok as well. Mm -hmm. if, if that, and, and now that the demographics are expanding as well, it's not anymore like a, just a Gen Z platform, but rather like a really, really good, good use acquisition channel. So that's, that's a place where we've also seen. Got it. Yeah, but on TikTok, I guess you have to come up with some crazy creative stuff so, to, to, right. to grab some attention. Yeah, it, it takes a lot more resources. And like I said, because it's only videos. So uh, yeah, it, it takes a lot more resources. Got it. Listen, is, is there anything else you wanted to share? Like any advice for people who are starting in this, in this vertical, maybe for existing mobile apps? Sure. So one thing I would, I would really, really recommend to do is to, is to just start, start early and, and, and start to test and, and uh, kind of just going five years back, it used to be so that you kind of, you build your new app, you build your new game, you try to keep it hidden and, and you try not to share it before it's actually in a state where you can share it because you didn't want anyone to know out about like your massive, like new idea that will break the world. And, and unfortunately those days are, are over or fortunately these days, like there's so many apps coming out constantly. There's so many games coming out constantly that it's, it's no matter what you do, like there's a good chance that someone else has thought of that already as well. So might as well go out there, showcase that idea with the, to the real users. So, and even like if, 
if our platform is too expensive for indies so so if you're an indie developer listening now with very very limited yeah. budget you have like 50 50 bucks in your hand so i still recommend to to create those assets yeah. go to facebook use one of the free survey tools or something and just have an ad and direct the users to the survey and showcase your idea to the real people that's can how they, you really if someone ideas. listening can they just dm you on linkedin or twitter and ask for a discount like yes yes <laughs> okay, that's, that's recorded now so yeah <laughs> yeah that that would be great so guys if you're listening <laughs> yeah. and you want to test out the platform just connect with Jesse and he'll give you some discount. What what would be the best way to connect with you? Is it on Twitter, on LinkedIn, where to find you? I'm very inactive on Twitter. I just read, produce rarely no content there. So LinkedIn would be the best place for sure. Got it. Nice. All right, man. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was super interesting to have this conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Thanks for having us.